I'd like to call the, where are we? April 18th, 2024, Montecito Consent Agenda or Review to Order, Item C1. 1950 Lemon Ranch Road. Danny and Stacy, are you on, please? Hey, John. Uh, it's it's John Kucharski and, and myself, Stacy. Um, she's she had a um, a funeral in the family. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Um, okay. So thank you. I did review your drawings, as you know. Thank you for clarifying the roof material. Thank you for clarifying the light direction. And I've gone back and forth a little bit with Stacy, and I think she's got her lighting in a good place. So I'm ready to recommend approval unless Rob has some comments um, on it. Yeah, two, two things. Um, I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, you were concerned about having a hedge on the front, and they actually have a hedge on part of it. So I guess I was wondering why the hedge couldn't be extended to the other side where it was symmetrical and solve your your issue. Um, first of all, the drawings that Stacy did are very nice. So they're very complete. So very impressed. Um, but the um, and then the other aspect I had mentioned, I thought that the olive trees at the entry kind of clog the entry up. But if that's your design preference to kind of approach it that way, then then you know that's your preference. So um because those were comments i had made and yeah they weren't responded to so but i'm okay with whatever you do what you want to do so we've got to keep it brief here okay danny do you have a comment um no i think that's it we we did um we did respond i think in our email um response to with the resubmitted plan stacy had gave some thoughts on that we we did study this those two trees with her and model and um i mean i was kind of either way i could see it but stacy felt pretty strongly that those those olives would be kind of a, a sculptural element that kind of framed the entry so um she, so she the hedge the hedge part though that was a big concern of yours about extending it to the left hand side so it's balanced and then that well it's not like... only that but the hedge tends to uh, absorb light from these sites yeah. and if you drive through Montecito at night it's black because of the hedges yeah. so do you have a comment about that Danny Please. yeah the the hedge on the uh, on the right side is um, for privacy those are the three bedrooms on that wing. And so the hedge, you know, the the architecture of a hedge is is not as desirable for for this um, you know style just to have that kind of crisp uh, green wall. Um, they like a more rambling, like sculptural landscape and and kind of free form. Um, so I think that's a nice balance to have, you know, kind of create this asymmetry rather than like a hard line, you know, 100 foot long wall of of green. Um, I know that's common in like the hedgerows and stuff, but for. So so I, yeah, you don't, okay. So I, I, I don't fully agree, but I'm okay with, I mean, it's, I think it's become the, your design, right. your preference, so I'm back. Yeah, the, the HOA didn't want to see a big hedge along the front, so. Yeah, let's approve it. Okay, so Danny and John, thank you very much for a nice complete set. Also, uh, tell that to Stacy, and uh, we're going to recommend approval as submitted at this point. Okay. Great. Great. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Item C2, as it turns out, let's see, this is uh, 390 Miramonte Avenue. The drawings were not as complete as they usually are in this board. Uh, for a final, but I think that they're okay for a preliminary. And so I would like to, and um, uh, Robert Foley was here earlier and we chatted. And what I'd like to recommend is a preliminary approval with restudying the roof at the master bedroom, master bath, so that the neighbor can get a better view of the mountains and fully explore. Um, uh, lighting, the site lighting, which I felt was not 
well rendered on this. Do you have a comment here? Um, is is this the um, what's the landscape arc? Which drawing is this the McClure Chuck? Your drawings, Chuck. So so. Um, Push the button if you need to. So go ahead. The the only thing that caught my eye, and I um, tried to get a hold of you, um, was the chain link fence. I mean, are you open to maybe the um, on the perimeter? The reason for that is um, it's not chain link fence. It's a six foot wood fence. And the only reason is is there's these tremendous oak trees on um, on well on property and then on the north and south. And so if we take a hedge past an oak like that, it's going to kind of say what I was. So what, what I was saying is before I was that I was thinking of, of, of like black vinyl uh, with wood posts is a more kind of rustic roll look. Would you be open to um, that? But, as but I believe I don't think we have. Did, any I read, chain did I read that wrong? Yeah, I don't think I don't. We don't have any chain link fence. If we have wood fence. I thought I saw that where there was chain link on the back. You had you had like a, a ranch fence and the uh, like a split rail in the front, and then I thought the back around the back perimeter was. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Was, okay, was so there is this. Was oh, chain yeah. link. Well, that's behind head. Oh, I see behind the building, the uh, cabana building. I just saw I just saw a chain link fence that caught my eye. So is there? So you could study that. Okay, sure. So we'll, yeah, I'm, I believe we're coming back in. So so I mean so that that black vinyl. Yeah. Chuck with wood posts, I think it's a real nice, more rustic okay. rural look for that. Sure. Yeah. And then Robert had a whole bunch of lights, kind of these big down light, right? But they're not the nice down lights that you work with. These are like 200 watt bulbs. Oh, okay. Was that on the building? Yeah. Okay. And uh, not sparsely on the building. So I think that if you took a little look at it and brought in some of these low voltage path lights and stuff, and we've seen farm, we're trying to keep the lighting down, but I'd much rather have you guys figure it out as a low level than- Just the knee high and below? Kind well, of. or also in the trellis in that eating area. Okay. You know, it's just get it right, keep the lighting levels low, keep it so you can't see it up from the property line. Plans? Did you think were incomplete? Was because I thought the landscape plans were com pretty complete. The architecture were not. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's what I want. Okay. okay. Sure. I'll I'll mention that. So again. we are on for preliminary. Is there anybody that would like to address the board? Uh, public comment on this item, please. No speakers. Okay. So we're going to make a motion to uh, for preliminary restudy the master bath roof and the site lighting. Okay, and, and the fence and fencing. Okay. Okay, very good. So that's item C2. Item C3, no reason to move. Come on, come on, come on. So when I looked at Will's drawings, it looked like the walls, the human built elements at the street, at the west side had been removed from the drawings. No, no, yeah, push the button. But you were proposing a new wall up there. It was a curb on the northwest. Yeah, yeah that wasn't the wall. It was just a six-inch stone curb, sandstone. Okay. You omitted we, that. We took it out. I don't think it was taken off your drawings. That's why I bring it up. Pretty certain it was on this new set. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you to verify okay. that. Okay. When I looked at your drawings, it looked like it was still there. Okay. Hopefully the, we got the right set. Okay. But it, and besides that, I'm good. Great. I think you've got to be really careful with the glass on that, on the trellis. But it's not just uh, seated glass. That doesn't meet the regulation of the county. It's, it's opaque. Diffused opaque. No, opaque means you can't see through it. Right. But we're talking about the exterior lighting fixtures, right? Yeah, it's translucent, probably. Translucent means you get some light through. It's actually right here where you can see through your skin. That's translucent. But there's certain, it's not clear as to exactly what that is. I like what you're doing. I just want to make sure we keep it. Okay, okay. well noted. Right. Okay, good. And are you good with the science then? 
Yeah, so am I. So we're going to recommend approval as submitted with re just verify that that wall is, sure. is shown and and that's it. We're good. Thanks so much for your extra effort on that. Well, thank you very much. Yep. Item C uh, C four. Uh, six six nine poles. Anybody here for that? Heidi, are you here or somebody else? Hi, hello. Yes, I'm here. I'm going to pass it on to architect John Beecham to go through all the plans. Okay, so did you have any comments about this? I had no comments about it, Heidi. I think it looked fine the way it was. Okay. So let's see what Rob says. This is that little as built utility garage or the workshop. <clears throat> It's not the most um, architecturally refined building that we've seen this year <laughs> or last year or the year before, but Fair. It's, it's fine. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're okay with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a, your last comment. It's basically as built. You can't see it. It's in the middle of the property. I don't know why they need to. Maybe they want to sell the house and they want to get it permitted. I don't know. So we're going to recommend approval, Heidi. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that's it. We'll be back in 15 minutes.
Okay, I'd like to call the April 18th, 2024 Montecito Board of Architectural Review to order. Uh, public comment, is there anybody that would like to address the board on an issue, on an item that's not uh, on our agenda today, please? And for those of you who are joining us online, uh, go ahead and raise your hand when you'd like to speak. Um, if you'd like to speak on this item, raise your hand, I'll call on you. Not seeing any hands. Okay, thank you. Agenda status report, David, please. Uh, we do have two changes to today's agenda. Uh, the applicants for items number four and five have requested a continuance to your May 2nd hearing. Motion to that effect. I'd like a motion to continue item four, 540 Periwinkle Lane, and item five, 494 Parker Square to the next agenda. Is there a second to that motion, please? Any discussion, please? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Minutes of April 4th. Anybody got anything, please? Item, item one, the uh, highway widening. There was... Um, and so one of the, the first comment, I think, was we were pretty... It says um, the reduction in landscape area and elimination of the trees from the design is a significant issue. I think basically it was just plainly not acceptable. Okay, is that, did we say that is not acceptable? We said it in a bunch of different ways. Yeah. Did we, it was that clear in the meeting, please? I think. We didn't quite say that. I think Rob's idea to maybe mix it up a bit, combination of planters, maybe guardrail in some places, the other wall in other places might might actually be a better solution rather than just a wall that's you know a mile long. Uh, so I'm not quite sure that's the right response. Well, let's get the, I think we all were there, but let's try to get it correctly stated as to what we actually said. Does anybody got any proposals for the language, please? I was asking that, um, was it the concrete barriers um, didn't allow for, um, they weren't able to use the concrete barriers because they could not facilitate drainage. And so, so I asked that the, um, that, that we do a mix of the concrete bar barriers, uh, and key, um, accent and, and some key areas so that we could have kind of clusters of trees along the way. So basically when you're driving 60 miles an hour, you'll, you'll see, we're doing the minutes. What do we want the minutes to say, please? I was just trying to explain. I know. I think we all got that. So I mean, two, I mean, two kind of expressed a little bit better what you talked about there. Um, I, yeah, I guess I guess, you know, that's probably well simply said. And um I just I just was mostly item one was I thought we were I just wanted to be clear that what they did was not acceptable. So I didn't want to like hedge on that. Do we think that we said is unacceptable? I would say the reduction in the landscape area as proposed um, uh, not supportable, not supportable. Okay, so let's take out from the design is, and then change the next wording is not acceptable. How's that? Does that work for everybody? That's what I wrote. Okay, excellent. And then what else? Yeah. Okay, Any anybody else got anything, please? Okay, I have something very minor, item number five. So in the motion itself, Wolf moved. Mendrill absent recused. I don't think you can do both. Um, so because he wasn't there, Mendro absent. Sure. I just, I added that to show that for the record that, uh, when it came back, that it would be cleared that 
he's likely to recuse again. That's fine, but he didn't he didn't recuse at that meeting. Fine. I'm not going to die on that hill. Okay, and that's actually all I had. Is there mo anybody else, please? Is there a motion for approval? Oh, did you have anything? Is there a motion for approval, please? Okay, I'll do it. Is, uh, move for approval of the minutes of April 4th as amended. Is there a second, please? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Members, informational, what? Dave Mendro abstains. Uh, members informational briefing anything anybody okay I actually have something do you have my little thing so as people know I am uh, somewhat concerned about neighborhood compatibility studies and I wrote up something that I would like to share with everybody if you can just slowly go down through it and it looks at the community plan and the table that we're using and it talks about what we see you know lots of diversity about what the plans are that we get and then why I believe that there were a number of uh, different approaches to the FAR studies this is the form from the city of Santa Barbara's FAR study their their ordinance their FAR is in the ordinance. If you want to appeal it, this is how you do it, and they have a methodology. I discussed that. And then I'm suggesting that we adopt a system where we use a percentile, uh, whether or not the property is within a certain percentile, and it's approved if it is, and it's denied if it isn't. And then I talk about the seven percent bump. Now, what this is, let's take a second here. What this is, is that the FAR that we use goes to the inside face of exterior wall. The County of Santa Barbara, which almost everyone uses, the assessor's office is outside face of wall. And so when you're comparing a larger building, you get, it's, my guess is it's about a 7% bump, automatic. So I just described that. And then I provide three examples, Dave, down further. I described those a little bit. Next page. And what this is, is you lay it out pretty much the way the county has it, or the city has it, but it actually does some analysis of it using Excel to do some analysis, including percentiles, and then presents it graphically with the always on the left-hand side and always in red is the project. And it shows the 60, 70, now, I'm not saying that those are the ones. I think it's everybody should be involved in that next one. This one obviously doesn't work. Again, exactly the same thing. Different neighborhood, next. And in this case, it makes it. So it's not like this rejects everything. And the last one, people keep talking about, but what about Edge Cliff and Fernald Point? This takes a look at a very high density. And I actually did Edge Cliff. And look at the variety of the housing sizes down there. I didn't realize it was this far. But you can get about 154 even at the 60 percentile. And But there's some, one of these is 247 or something like that. I mean, it's huge. And then I have a suggested procedure, and I draw some conclusions here and observations. Next, please. And that's it. And what I'd like to do with this is to have a discussion item with our board on the agenda. Next meeting, it sounds like we have a lighter agenda. And I'd like David to include this in when he sends out the minutes to everybody, include this as sort of an attachment or a, so that everybody in the community, everybody that gets it, because I think there's a lot of interest. We went from 100 FAR to 110. The best I can figure out, it was before I got here, kind of one day the board member said, let's make it 110. Let's not tell anybody. Well, let's just kind of make it 110. But so I'd like to, anyway, I'd like to have whoever wants to participate, participate. And I'm asking the board now if they'd like to do that, please. And it's just whether or not you feel a discussion item is warranted and whether or not this is good for anybody. Yeah, I'd, 
I'd be willing to take a look at it, John. Yeah, yeah, full board. Yeah, as a, as a discussion item. Yeah. John, as usual, you've done an amazing job putting this together. But I'm not clear. Are you saying we're going to go gross or net? What I'm saying is when we, we're, uh, that's part of the discussion. I don't think we need to get into that now. Okay. When you read this, it, it talks about how to rectify the gross and the net. And so, but I think we should be aware of it. Any, and would you be willing or interested in? I, yeah, I would be. I, I just want to make sure that I like the net because it doesn't penalize people for having thick walls. And we, that is the reason we did it. Let's have the discussion next meeting. I'm going to send out with David's permission to you guys. I have everyone's email address. And then when David sends it out, who's ever on the big list will get this and we'll see if people in the community have interest in it or not and what their comments, if they say, you know, and we'll just see. But I don't want to do anything like what the previous board did, just to bump something around. Okay. So if you could do that, David, you have a copy of that now? Okay, very good. Mem uh, anybody else have anything for members' informational briefing, please? Okay. Staff update, anybody? I just wanted to follow up on the email I sent out regarding that the May 30th meeting. So um, I was talking to John about this earlier. So our next couple of agendas are a little light currently. Um, if the, it's the board's um, preference to just cancel the 30th, I think we could probably get away with that without too much impact. Um, if you prefer having kind of a little easier meetings and then I re would suggest rescheduling it. So it just kind of depends on what the board uh, prefers so, but um, staff is not going to be available on the thirtieth. Thirtieth of May. May, and that, as a matter of fact, I will not be around on the thirtieth of May. So, if that helps. Uh... And Stacy will be on first meeting, and Chip, who knows, I should be here. Currently, I'm here. I just assume. So, well, my question was: Is are you talking about then bumping the front? Uh, First, the next meeting and the one after that by showing the one that no, was just eliminate the meeting. Well, I lim eliminate it, but then take those agenda items and push them wherever they need to go. Probably that. Um, yeah, that would probably be the end result of, of can if we cancel the meeting. But I, what I'm saying is, it seems like your agendas can accommodate that currently. Uh, meetings are light. Me too. Thank you. How late can we decide next meeting or yeah. do we need to decide this meeting? Yeah. No. Let's decide next meeting. Who knows? Things may just, you know, Alan Greenspan may lower the interest rates and the whole thing blows up. You know, who knows? Oh, but he's not here anymore. Okay, so let's let's do it next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Kimberly, anything, please? Okay, Montecito consent agenda. Rob and I did it. Item number one, this was uh, Danny Long, Long Will, I think it is, and Stacy uh, Fawcett project in Burnham Wood. And uh, at the end of the day, we felt that it was approvable as submitted. I had him put the uh, mat roofing on. It was not clear, and we changed out a couple of the lights to get them more clear but besides that i'd like to recommend for final approval sarah second please i'll second that any further discussion please all those in favor aye, aye. all those opposed uh item number c2 this is uh the project robert foley brought in at 390 miramonte up near, behind the ymca and uh i'd like to it's on for both preliminary and final and uh, what we discussed is to restudy the bathroom, master bathroom roof to lower it a little bit so that the neighbor to the south gets a little bit better view of the mountains and to restudy the site lighting. And he was acceptable with that. So I'd like to make 
Is there anybody that would like to address the board on item number C2390 Miramonte Avenue, please? No request to speak. It, we we did talk about resetting the fence. To oh, okay. And details, right? Okay, so I would let's everybody jump in as need be. I'll make a motion to for preliminary approval with the applicant to restudy the master bathroom roof, the site lighting, the chain link fence to another um, approach. On the, on the, the uh, west side of the property, right? I thought it was on the uh, sides and rear. It was. Okay, so the chain link fence and to. Um, yes. Move to uh, for final approval details uh, material transitions, trellis connections, uh, arbor over garage, stone wings coat, et cetera. Et cetera. Yeah. There's, is there a second to that motion, please? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Item C3, 520 Paragrande, uh, Will Gray's project on Paragrande. And it looked fine to me with the exception that I thought that Chuck's drawing still showed a wall next to the uh, roadway. And he assured me it wasn't there and just to verify that. And did you have anything on that? No. So, I'd like to make a motion for final approval of item C3 with the landscape architect to verify uh, that his drawings are in coordination with the architect's drawings on the west side, uh, next to Par Grande Avenue. Is there a second, please? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, uh, item C4669 Cowles Road. This is that little as built storage shed. Uh, you know, it is what it is. And so we just we recommend granting it for final approval. And so I'll make a motion for that for final as submitted. Is there a second? Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Kurt, you're up. Item C1, uh, item one, please. 231 Middle Road. We have never seen this project before. You know how to get the mics on there, Kurt? Pushing that horizontal button. There you go. You got it. Can you speak closer into the mic? Thank you. Hello, oh, this is on uh, corner of Mesa and Middle Road. It, the existing house is a kind of a one-story ranch, ranchy type, low, low roof, uh, built in the 60s, and we're proposing to turn it into more of a country Mediterranean Spanish type look. Um, I don't know if you want to go to the photograph. Can you look at the FAR, please? Over here. Okay, and so when you actually go through and do it, and Kurt made a mistake on this, but when you actually do it, it's 116. You have it shown as 140 or something. Yeah, I didn't, I was confusing whether you add the 80, there's an ADU on the project. Yeah, it's that's fine. It's 116. Okay, good. So go on, please. Well, so if you want to look at the existing uh, condition, uh, the photographs on, I think it's at the end of the uh, presentation. Yeah, so there you go. So uh, the top right-hand side is the corner of Mesa Road. There's a, a kind of a horseshoe driveway going from Mesa Road to Middle Road there, and then there's the driveway to the garage. The landscaping are existing is is quite dense. Um, it's kind of overgrown with some trees that are causing problems. There's a, a, a big power pole there you see on the corner, and there's a Canary Island palm and a eucalyptus tree there. 
So, um, and then I guess go back to the site plan. We have uh, Robert Richards, landscape architect on the project. So right now we're proposing to add some square footage to the house, which is on the, in the backyard area, the front really kind of, there's a little bit of an entry uh, tower element we're adding and then the, a bedroom by the garage coming out to the setback. This is a corner lot, so it has, you know, major front yard setbacks on both sides. I guess why don't you go to the elevations? Uh, scroll down a little bit more. Well, yeah, so the living room element, right now it's all eight foot plates. We're, we're proposing to have the main great room at a 10 foot plates and then having the bedrooms kind of step down to nine foot and transitioning to the eight foot plates on the ends of the building. You can see the uh, existing elevations is pretty plain Jane. Um, there's that stone arched element there, with the new entry. I guess scroll down a little bit more. Do another. That's the back side. The uh, we're just kind of using simple Spanish Mediterranean farmhouse kind of detailing, gable roofs, have the the roof tiles roll over the edge there and uh, reducing the overhangs to about a foot or 18 inches with some rafter tails. This is the uh, west side and the existing ADU you can see with a stone fireplace. Continue, I guess scroll continue. This is coming back to the East side showing the, the entryways stone. The, um, there's a new arched big glass window there on one end. And then the master bedrooms wing is off to the right, the nine foot high plate. I guess let's go to the landscape plan. So. Robert, we're trying to, um, there's a lot of trees that need to be thinned out and removed. They're kind of at the end of their lives. So we're, we're proposing a plaster wall around the house on the middle road and Mesa Road sides with gates, uh, new Mediterranean theme plantings on the front, the backyard we're kind of keeping as is. There's quite a lot of existing trees back there, um, stone pavers, replacing what's there, a new patio. Um, I guess scroll down, he's created some renderings of the, what you'd see on the, from the front, corner view, the entry gates, new plantings, olive trees, the gates would be pretty much solid wood. Uh, new stone driveway aprons. And uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, questions. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, Bill, questions, please. Is that drive through existing there? Yes. That's, but there's. Are there are there there are no gates on it though? There's, There's no gates on it. Oh, that's not the question. That's a good question. Well, I'm gonna say it. Okay, that's great. a good question. Um, uh, yeah, the, it's a it's an existing driveway that kind of goes through there, but no gates, no wall either. It's you all. have to do a FAR study. Have you done a study for the FAR for the neighborhood? Yeah. No, I haven't. No, I haven't, but it, you know, it's the smaller lots. They're all pretty much similar in FARs. 
Okay, Dave, please, questions. Just the two trees being removed? No, there's, uh, oh, back to the landscape plan. So uh, there's a, on the front corner, there's the, uh, well, actually there's those two large uh, Canary Island palms that are being removed and replaced with smaller, similar type palms. There's a eucalyptus tree that's cut back significantly over the years. It's also in conflict of the power pole, power line, power pole that's on the, um, Mesa Road side there on to the right of the driveway. Then there's a, a rather large podocarpus. It's kind of next to the house on the east side of the driveway. And then there's a big um, pittosporum tree in the backyard. Where we, we, uh, we have an arborist out there and he concurred that it wasn't going to cause any problems and was the podocarpus and the pittosporum are kind of overgrown and past their age. It's a little hard to hear you either. Sorry. Pull the mic towards you or speak louder. No oak know. trees or other species. No, no. And you uh, gone to the fire department for your permit? Not yet, no. Well, Rob. Question, please. Can we go to the um, sheet that has the um, color palette for the house, please? It'd be the elevation sheet. Um, I believe so. Uh, that one um, is is the the body color for the house going to be um, more of that taupe up in the upper left, or is it, it going to be that bright white, or what is it? Uh, it what is the intent? Uh, the rendering show bright white, but we we're thinking of using more of a linen kind of linen color, is that, off white, taupey. Not like, not like what more like the little swatch up in the upper left. Is that a better representation? Or? Yeah, not quite as deep as that. It's the then, colored chip kind of got. And then you are doing that light mint kind of on the trim. The the light green. The light green is that we have steel doors. Yes, yeah, so it'll be a uh, light green thin metal door window. And then the barrel tile roof. And the the, the gates and the, the eaves are going to be in a gray stain, semi-transparent. And in and, and full disclosure, I am um, the landscape architect for the project did contact me. Uh, who was not going to be at the meeting today and asked me if I would take a look at it. And so I had some comments that when I have a chance to comment, I will put those forth. Great. No comments. No questions. No questions. Bert, I want to go to that driveway site plan, or the landscape plan is actually pretty good for that. Yes. I don't think I've ever seen a driveway <laughs> that is that close to the corner, much less two curb cuts that close, one on Mesa and one on Middle. Are you sure, and I understand that your entire design is based on that driveway. Have you gone to Public Works to make sure that they will permit this driveway or that it is permitted have you gone done that yet please no i haven't but it is existing so it's existing but that doesn't mean it's permitted correct okay it may or may not be i don't know i'm asking the question have you gone and checked no okay very good thank you i have nothing further uh public comment is there anybody that would like to address the board on item number one two three one middle road please Go ahead. Uh, no request to speak. One more question, Bill. Um, Kurt, uh, are you relocating the entry to? Is that is that where it is right now? That's where it is now. That's where it is now. All right, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Comments, same order, Bill. Yeah. Uh, 
I'd like to see an FAR study. I'm sure, because we're over our uh, allowable 116 there. So. But, you know, we feel comfortable and we'll see what we got. Um, the House additions look fine, you know, pending the FAR study. Uh, I, I like the style. It looks good. The materials look good. The only thing I have a question about is the the idea, the driveway that John has brought up, certainly the trickiness of that, which is if it's existing, it's existing, is the idea of having two gates on it. It just seems like you're enclosing a very small space, and I'm not sure that, uh, that the gates really, uh, uh, it seems like it'd be very complicated to get in and out of there. Uh, easily, um, uh, the fact that it doesn't have gates now, I, I'm, I'm fine with. Uh, so it's it's kind of the gate out, and as well, I think you're going to need a little more setback from the street there um, for fire. So I think you're going to need to check with them, make sure they're okay with it, and that uh, that that'll work. So the the only, my only hesitation, I think, is the gates. Uh, Dave, please. Yeah, I think comments. The architecture, I think, is a nice, very nice upgrade. Um, Dome House. Um, again, my concerns would be one, the FAR, doing an FAR study to justify exceeding FAR one sixteen. One, yeah, he put the ADU in the wrong place on the wrong line. So, if you can demonstrate that that's typical of the neighborhood. Bill mentioned that concerned about the, the driveway, um, both for fire access and then also just, you know, we wouldn't approve something if this was a new project that we'd like to have done. So confirming that it's an existing permitted violation to get public works and fire department to sign off. Is that it? Rob, please. Um, yeah, I think, you know, architecturally and landscape architecturally, both of you have done a lot of nice things. Um, my, and I try to stay out of colors, but my, um, in terms of the colors that, that white, I mean, that taupe feels better. And then actually the mint doesn't feel so good. So I try to stay out of colors, but I'm not crazy about the mint. Um, can we go back to the site plan that we just, um, sorry to, um, so what, what I told the landscape architect, there are some, some trees, um, shown as different choices actually if you go to the the um the 3d renderings please um so i think like the like i wouldn't use the canary ansys basically i'd use a lighter palm and i think that goes to what's being said about you know there's a lot of stuff happening within the gate so that go if you're going to use palms in that case don't use the canary island date palms they're just too heavy and the same with the the paving. I think there needs to be a little more hierarchy in the way the paving is used. Like have some accent paving, but then right now you're showing everything being flagstone. So I think it would lend itself if you kind of um, use the flagstone and kind of some accent areas, and then maybe do something a little simpler um, in some of the other areas. And because right now it feels like there's a lot of paving, and I think you can work with that and make it uh, a little more organic. Um, one, one last comment. I, that one elevation right there in the lower right, when I looked at it, it looks like that gate into the garage is really long, but I think it's the deception of the SketchUp in there. It doesn't really kind of serve you in that case. It makes it look huge, and I think it's much, um, it's a, it's much less wide. So those are my comments. Thank you. Robert, comments? I agree, it's a nice upgrade, but I think there's some work to be done with the architecture. It's kind of my focus here. And for instance, on this lower left photo, that elliptical arch that almost touches the furnace, you know, combined with Roman arches and there's other elements that just seem incongruous to me. Um, and so in, as you proceed, I would encourage you to clean things up a little bit and give us some good details. Uh, 
strongly encourage thicker walls. If you're going to try to pull off this Mediterranean theme, it's you, you, what you're basically trying to do is emulate a masonry building, and you're not going to be able to do it with two by four or even two by six walls. So it's definitely a great improvement and on the right track, just uh, needs a little bit more development. And I, I think you have a great project. Um, and I have just, I think the architecture is nice. I think it can be refined, of course, but I think it's basically nice. I think there's a lot of hardscape on this project and it appears that there are wetter wets and drier dries as we move further in the climate alteration. And my guess is that with all of this paving, it's gonna be harder to keep the house dry inside and you might wanna study on how much you can reduce that paving to whatever. Sophie Calvin, who I know you know, we all worked together at one point, um, did a project down on Miramar Avenue in San Leandro, and it was a corner lot. And it was actually the driveway to a very large estate, something like 20, 30 acres, right on the corner. And this extends back to like 1900 or something, it might have been even into the 1800s, this driveway has been there that long. But it was never permitted and as I remember, Public Works required that she essentially abandon that driveway for use. She, I think she had to keep it for historical reasons, but she couldn't use it. <laughs> okay, something weird like that. I can't, You can call her and ask her. I don't remember. It's 23. But I have a hard time believing that that driveway configuration is legal. And I think that a significant portion of your design is based on that driveway. And I would ask you to do that right away, the, uh, right? And then second of all, an FAR study. Now, we see them of all different sizes and shapes. I'm proposing you probably saw that presentation today. That yes, I did. Standardize it. I'd be happy to send that to you. Great. Um, it is certainly not official. It's not been adopted. We don't really know what it means, but it will give you a, a, at least some guidance if you'd like me to do that. And I'll send it through the planner, okay, Veronica? Okay, very good. Anything anything more from anyone? Okay, thank you. We'll see you soon. We'll see how much it changes with this driveway or whether or not it's legal. Okay, okay thanks so much, Kurt. So, Item number two. Uh, level that... Oh, back, I think, for concept. Yeah, I think that it's potentially, and then if it's, if he gets through concept next time, I think it's preliminary final and consent after that, right? Yeah. yeah. I'll go do that research about the driveway. Right to this afternoon, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay, item number two, 607 Meadow Lane. There is some history on this. Let me explain it to you. William Hefner's project brought this through. They got completely approved. As I understand it, the contractor went out there, laid out the building, and everybody looked at it and said, you know what? This would really be a lot nicer if we move this project closer to the neighbor. Okay, basically exactly the same project, but closer to the neighbor. They, I got a something from Willow that said, can you approve this? And I looked at it and I thought about it and I thought about it. I like the building. I think you guys have done a nice job. But I was not willing as a single individual to make an after final approval. I felt that it needed to be re-agendized, whatever. And it, in fact, we're on for preliminary and final today to make sure you guys are rock solid with any approval that you do or don't get. But that's the reason that I did it so that the county and me as an individual could not be, what are you doing? It was approved and you changed the, the deal on me. So. With that introduction, uh, whomever would like to take over, please go ahead. What, what it's basic, we've looked at the building. We it's basically a site plan change, right? Uh, mic on, push the button. There you go. There we go. Okay. Um, 
so anyway, what happened, we tore down the house. The people moved into the former guest house with their kids and then realized that with everything demoed, there was a much more open, the farther kind of back and to the south that we were able to get on a lot, it opened up much more of a view of the mountains to the north. Um, so we looked at um, reciting the, basically the same house, moving the house on the lot. We pivoted it about the garage point and we can sort of illustrate how we did, but did that, but that's how we, that's what drove it. That's why we're here. Um, and I think in our case, we have two thoughts, which Carl can present, but one of them is that um, we're a long way from neighbors there, like this 618 Hot Springs, which is our immediate neighbor to the west. Their house is 150 feet from ours. And then there's a flag lot that comes through between us and our southern neighbor. So we're pretty well um, separated from them. But I'll let Carl explain what the pivot and shift does on the uh, on the site plan. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Carl, you're off screen. But there you go. You go to the next site plan, please. Uh, next. Okay, there we go. Maybe zoom in a little bit on that. <clears throat> so the dash line that's there was the previously approved project. And you can see we're kind of rotating it slightly and then pushing it back to the west to allow for more space um, in the open yard. And uh, I think he's, I think he's got it. Yeah, there it is. There. So that was a previous um, location. And so we just uh, shifted it slightly and moved it back to the our portion of it. So we just altered the garage slightly, but that was about it. Carl, well, can you get closer? It's, it's hard to hear you. Sure. So the garage was just um, altered slightly, um, and that was really about it as far as the square footage. William. William. So the garage moved from this was the previous corner of the garage. The garage moved from there to here to there. And then the previous um footprint of the house, this was this outer edge of the house, which this rotated down here. So we moved it sort of back this much and then pivoted it down in order to maximize the So I think that pulled us back further away from the street. I know you guys had concerns on our initial concept approval about kind of the height of the building if viewable from the street. So we were able to push that farther away from the street and also um, push us farther away from our closest neighbor, which is the, our neighbor to the north. And um, David, if you could go to the next um, page, there's a site diagram. Next one, please. So here's the um, kind of the neighbors. Uh, 618, you could see, is approximately 300 feet away from um, the our property. Um, you could see lot number 15, which is our the driveway that flag lot cuts through, and then the closest neighbor is um, zero, which is. Um, to the north, and we're moving farther away from them. Um, neighbor number six is which we're, we're getting a little bit closer to, but um, they're still quite a distance away from our proposed. Uh, next slide, please. Next. The finished floor elevation remains the same. Next one, please. Okay, so here's a diagram, site section diagram, kind of going through the property. And you can see the lower section on our worst case scenario where the garage is going through. And then to the left of that, the property line, the driveway with all the adequate um, landscaping and hedging between them, and then the neighbors to the south, which is below there. So there's quite an elevational change. And 
I think the distance between the two structures is about 100 feet. Uh, the middle section shows a, a more of a, the living situation where the bedroom is, and then the distance to the neighbor, and it actually is a, a motor court, so they didn't even use that as an outdoor living space. The outdoor living space is uh, to the south of their building. And there's some photographs showing kind of the existing conditions. So you can see the uh, photograph on the upper right-hand side looking at the driveway that separates the two sites and the distance between them. I know this, there was a, a letter that I would like to respond to later if you read that. Is that it? Yes. Yeah. Um, just for kicks, because you're kind of here for everything, right? Can we just click, click, click through the drawings so that we see, just keep going. If there's any questions, yell. But we've already done this, I just, but it's, since we're doing the whole banana today, probably. And the landscape plan must have changed a lot. Um, just slightly, I think. Do you have that included today, please? Yes. Okay. Well, you're grabbing a whole bunch more land north of the house, right? Correct. Um, Dennis Hardesty is from our office and to see if he is online. Dennis? Yes, I'm here. Uh, yes, hi. Um, yeah, the, basically the all the plant material has remained the same. Uh, there's just a little more uh, space and um, layering in the front there. Um, this is Willow, the planner. I um, also included the previous approval with the um, previous approval landscape plan if you wanted to look at that. Seen what they need to see. Everybody, okay. Are you guys done then? Questions, Robert. No questions. Dave, questions. Rob, Rob, questions. I'm still absorbing, so no questions at the moment. No questions. Um, the uh, the parking. Have you looked at? I'm sure you have. How that uh, back out and I. I See that you have a third car somewhere back in that tan uh, buff colored area the the three cars two inside one outside but you, to get out do you have to back back all the way out or can you make a three four point turn and turn around and um you could back out you can back out so you get go out the gate the gate is open backwards and then you swing and then forward okay because it just looks a little tight there and then, um, and then you had a lot of cut and fill, and, and uh, is that because you've got the underfloor area? Is that what the numbers are from? What's the large numbers of cut and fill I see here? Uh, that's correct. That's because of the basement. Yes, the crawl space. Yes, it's because of the crawl space. So it's under the foundation. It's not. Does it look like your your red line on your sections was not far from what the, the new grades were? Correct. Yeah, it's, ex it's export for um, foundation and crawl space. That was it. Thank you. And I have no questions. So public comment. Tracy, I, I have a slip here. Please come up. Is there anybody else besides Tracy? Oh, okay. Okay, that's fine. And there's a long button on this mic. Push that down until it turns red. And speak into the mic, please. And would you identify yourself just so we have? Um, Tracy Stoll, and I'm at 572 Stone Meadow. Okay. And you're? Sharon Tratner at 1327 Green Meadow. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. So I'm at the end of the cul-de-sac at the bottom, and she shares the long driveway that there is a, abuts their property. Um, 
I think all of us collectively, including um, Sharon Hughes, who's at the bottom of the cul-de-sac, is worried about drainage. Santa Barbara has become more rainy in the last four or five years. My house is flooded twice completely in the most recent uh, rain. Can you stop for a second? Can we go back to that study that shows where the houses are? And then could you help us find out who you are, please? Oh, down right there. You're number five. Okay, so five, six, and seven. Here and drains all the way down, but all the water. Tracy, down. Tracy, can you use the mic? If thank you. So, my house is Fine. here. All the water from this entire street and above, because there's a drain right here, comes down our street and comes into my house. So my house is completely flooded twice now. My entire house, my pool house, my pool is an entire river. There's two drains here that are not adequate for the water that flow that comes down the street. Their property um, has quite a lot of water coming off of it. And I know right now it's a construction site, so it's hard to tell what it's gonna look like afterwards. But my concern is that their current drainage plan is just going to push all the water out into the street and just add more to the water flow. So I'm hopeful that they'll tie it into the existing drainage that's out here on the street. So it's not just in the street flowing down. And then I can deal with the county later about that. And I think she's concerned that all the water that comes down here just goes right into their driveway and has recently like damaged their landscaping along the fence line and then the front of their driveway just has constantly water, which is turning to like moss in their driveway. And same with their house over here. Okay. Thank you for being concise. Go ahead, would you like to speak? Yeah, basically, I just wanted to also say that we've had the problem for almost two years. Your swale has been, I think, probably feeling we've had consistent water all, we have a long driveway and there's been several points where water has just flooded our driveway and our driveway is lined with pepper trees, one's now died. So we need to have this addressed. We've been, we've been going back and forth trying to get this addressed for almost two years. So this does, this is, this needs to be addressed as soon as possible. Please. And Sharon, is it, do you want to speak or not, please? Please identify yourself when you get up there, please. Sharon Hughes, and I'm at 571 Stone Meadow, number seven up there. And it's just that in that corner of their property, there's just groundwater and it, you know, comes down the street and it's it's a con it's been basically flowing constantly for I would say a year. There's like constant water coming down. And I also believe that it's coming from up above them. It's not their fault. Um but but it does need to get addressed because it is a problem for the whole street. Okay, and then let me ask a question. Have the three ladies and the two gentlemen met face to face and chatted about this before today, please? Okay. Okay, very good. Thank you. Yeah, and it's all very genial. Um, very good. But but we would like you guys to be aware because it does seem like it needs to get. Thank you. Undergrounded. Just wanted to say we've been in contact with the owners about this for the past year and a half. So, and I just wanted to be clear that my property is 15. I don't know if that was clear, just to, so you can see the scope. That's my driveway that runs the length there into the, into the property. Okay. okay, so it looks like we have some online people that would like to address us as well. Uh, yes, our first speaker will be Scott Tratner to be followed by Jason Hughes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Great. Um, yeah, I'm a uh, husband to Sharon at uh, Site 15 here. Um, I've done quite a bit of extensive looking and, and had a number of discussions with the Hags on the drainage 
issue. The, the swale is currently failing and all the runoff bypasses the swale and essentially goes under and across our driveway. And I've seen, and I've, I, I have a long text message with them that, that it's on, even on days it's not raining, we're having issues with the drainage. Um, so if you could actually go to the um, landscape plan uh, with the new garage placement, I just wanna point out one thing, if that's okay. You can see at the back edge of their property, the long swale and where it stops. And what happens is the water bypasses that and flows along our driveway and out. Does it, anyway, does that make sense? Okay. Thank you. Anyone? Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker will be Jason Hughes. Hi, um, this is Jason Hughes, and I'm actually the, uh, the Sharon's husband at five seven one. So it's it's the one down there next to the stalls. I, I just actually had one question, and then I'll have one comment. That swale that you were just discussing, where is that planned to drain? What where is that supposed to go in in the new plan? I know we've got. I should first also say to the architects and you know the engineers are on this. I mean, it looks like these plans and this house is beautiful. So, you know, I'm hoping and I'm assuming that you guys are dealing with all those issues, you know, even before these comments. And I, I just want to make sure we understand kind of what they are. Um, so th I, that's my first question. Where does the water from that swale there, where is that supposed to go in the plan? You guys have civil drawings shown here, please. Carl, do you know where they are, please? Um, they're at the end, I believe. Um, I'm sorry, before the landscape. There we go. So as they mentioned, there is a, an older and existing swale um, that is hardscaped in brick, lined in brick, and it runs on the, along that western um, driveway or property line. And um, you can move it. Move, Yes, so it's be, it has an easement there, a drainage easement, and so that has been existing, and we're not really changing that. Um, we are looking at the overall landscape and civil drawings and connecting all of the uh, down spouts, et cetera, and running everything out into the storm drain, uh, into the street. This issue was brought to our attention recently, and I had the opportunity to go to the site this morning, and the majority of the problem, there is a running stream that is coming from the neighbors at 618 uh, Hot Springs, which is much higher than us. Um, I have a photograph here if you'd want to take a look at kind of the source of what's going on. So the property, some property to the north is draining onto you. Yes. And essentially what you're representing is that you're letting it drain straight through. Correct. Or, and a lot of it is going past. It's going down um, from 618 to um, the driveway as well. Can you make sure that the neighbors have a view of that too, please? And when that when that swale fills overflows, does it where does it run? Does it run along your property and out to the, to the stone east, meadow, or, or does it? Uh, it runs to the east. Street. Yes. 
The other question I have. Wait, wait, wait. So I, I apologize for not remembering your name, but you ask a question, which you have. And right. now do you have your comment, please, and please be brief. Yeah, just quickly. So just to be clear, what I think I just heard is that swale is supposed to drain out to the street. It sounds Correct. like it's not currently. It sort of overflows down the Tratner's driveway. My, my only comment on all the upgrades to the drain, the stormwater drains that, that was referenced there, and then that swale, my understanding is that all of that is exiting the property. You know, I guess it's to the stormwater system, but just to be clear, I believe it's planned to exit onto the surface of that street. And the just to Tracy's point earlier, we would just request that they look at a way to get that into the stormwater drains that run right down the front of their property on Stone Meadow Lane, you know, at their property so that it doesn't flow surface, um, you know, across the driveway right beside them and then all the way down the street where it causes problems kind of at the low end. So that's that's my comment on this. The only other thing is I just want to add to is all of this volume is an issue with the county drainage system at the bottom of the street. So that may be a separate issue, but that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, anybody else, please? Uh, we do have one written comment letter. Um, also, Mr. Tratner has raised his hand again. If you'd like to consider that. Well, let's, okay, very quickly, please. It's normally just once, sir, Mr. Tratner. Sorry about that. I just I want to be clear on that rear swale where that drains because it looks like it spills into our property. Okay, thank you. Sure. We'll get this figured out before this. Thank you. Yeah. And we have a letter apparently. Comment letter. Okay. Uh, we're neighbors directly to the west. We received the most recent communication from staff and want to offer our comments and suggestions as you deliberate on the proposed permit. Firstly, I want to congratulate the owners for limiting the property to one-story design. The architecture and overall design fits in well with the surrounding neighbors. Obviously, a significant amount of thought and care went into the work. That said, we have the following comments. The FAR appears to be over the allowable amount and all but one of the neighbors are below the allowable FAR. All buildings are pushed east as opposed to center of property. This, uh, this coupled with the FAR causing more mass encroaching on our property, 618 Hot Springs, and has the effect of pushing the ADU into the setback. I realize that the NBRER has limited control, already built, by positioning the building on the center of the property and limiting the FAR should eliminate some of these concerns. Based on my reading of the plans, it appears the owners are raising the elevation grade by a few feet. This has effect of making the house more visible. I personally can't tell on landscape plans if there is adequate screening along the west property line, our east line, we would want to understand better and make sure there is adequate screening. One of the count courtyards is across the setback on their west side, our east side. Is there another page? Uh, they have uh, condensers right up against the setback on their west side, wondering if there's a better place to place these where they can't be heard. They have a new swale that the owners are putting on along their west property line and appears to be changing the historical water flow. This coupled with the new density of the proposed project might have the effect of concentrating the water runoff onto our property. I appreciate your and staff's time and look forward to learning more. I am looking forward to eventual approval for the owners so they can begin construction on their dream home. Is there anybody else? Please. No additional speakers. Okay. Amazing what happens. <laughs> Good thing I didn't approve it on my own. <laughs> Somebody's shining at me. 
what's that movie with Paul Newman? Got someone up there likes me. So, um, okay, board members. We've got a lot of comments, some comments about the FAR. Now let's go back on history. This project was approved all the way through final. They got a permit. Well, we determined that at one point. I don't know if we want to review that. My tendency is probably no, but um, it's up to the board. And then it sounds like the bottom line here really is mostly about the drainage. So members of the board, back in the same direction. We're on for a preliminary final. Robert, comments? I I really like the building. I think the repositioning is fine, but um, I think the drainage has to be addressed. Uh, we have this problem in Montecito called perched water, where you have bedrock about four feet down and the water from the mountains just it just comes bubbling out, so it's not this property's fault, but they could improve it by, you know, I've gone to the extent of digging huge basins filled with rocks for drain water, you know, to be held. I don't, what do you call that, a retention basin or something. Um, and we are in a different world now as, as far as rainfall. Who knows? We might get nothing next year. We might get 50 inches. But uh, the architecture is great, but I think we need a little more civil engineering on this. Uh, and some... You know, I don't know. That's why they came up with this tier one, two, three, four stormwater stuff. And I guess this didn't qualify for any of that study, but uh, you 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 got to be cognizant of the effect on the neighbors, even though the water is coming from above you. And... Um, that's really all I have to say. Comments, Dave. I can support the relocation of the building based on the existing conditions, the surrounding parcels and uh, grade elevations all, in my opinion, this shift isn't going to really impact the neighbors or the public. As far as the Drainage, that really isn't the purview of this board, but I strongly encourage you to get together with your civil engineer and meet with the neighbors and understand their concerns. And you do have to, as part of your project, address drainage and especially not increase impacts to, with your new developments. So I think this is an opportunity to, for you to fix things for your, your property and then in conjunction with, with your new project and what you have to do anyway. So it sounds like some communication would be very helpful now that you're aware of this issue. But I, again, I, that's not the purview of this board. So that's really working with them and working with the, the building department, the grading department, where you really can address those issues. Rob, comments, please. Um, well, is there a geotech? looked at any of this stuff too because what it seems like there's that 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 swale in the back that brick swale tells me that there's some historical drainage issues with the whole area in there that never maybe have been fully resolved but um but anyways when i look at i'm still trying to absorb and process this project there's a lot here but um i feel the landscape plan um maybe needs to you're obligated to keep the water on site. And there's an opportunity, I think, with the landscape plan and the upper right hand part of the project to maybe get a little more organic with it. it some of the, the forms and shapes of some of the hardscape landscape fields feel stiff and lineal, and I think we should kind of incorporate a little bit um, 
like for instance the pathway you know um that that squared off pathway you know could some of those aspects could be more organic and i'm thinking that upper right hand side is an opportunity to maybe create some retention basin or something um and or, you know have that be more of a natural edge an organic edge that you could resolve some of the grading um aspects of the project so that's that's all i got for that comments bill yeah, I, I can approve the building. I think it's a good looking building and the location, relocation of it. Um, go back to that civil drawing, Dave. And clearly not our review, it, and we're not gonna second guess what Ashley Vance has come up with your drainage. You know, that's kind of for you guys to work out. But I mean, I'm kind of surprised that the storm drains, the water that gets collected off the roof can go right into the street. We normally put it into some kind of catch basin or storage area. so. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that they've got that, and that might be something that uh, you might have as a correction later. I don't know if it got approved originally. And then just the the outflow, you know, we're always trying to look at what happens when the storm basins fill. You got to go somewhere after that. So, so just be conscious of that kind of stuff. And we'll leave it to Ashley Vance and you and your neighbors to kind of work it all out. Yeah, that's all. Well, my comments is I did not expect this, <laughs> you know. Number one, I'm aware that there are some projects where the neighbors didn't like the project for a good reason or not, and they held that project up by appealing it. And I'm wondering if it isn't a smart thing for the applicant to work with the neighbors to really try to figure out this drainage thing. I'm not sure it's all your fault. Sounds like you're getting some water dumped on you, but I think we're all aware that at least recently it's been wetter now than you know, two years back to back and 50 year storms are now one year storms. So um, I'm wondering if you guys could take a continuance work with the neighbors, work with your civil, figure out what's going on. Maybe um, I work on these very large projects down in Riverside and they have these uh, retention basins that are unre unreasonable, but I think you could do a very beautiful retention basin here on this property and not even have it be shown known um, as at least possibly and take care of a lot of this water and then come back to us in two weeks and we'll see what we can get done. Would that be acceptable? We can give you an approval, but they have the right to appeal it if they want and they can tie up. And I, I just personally would not like to do that. So um, two things. One is the owners moved into this little guest house with their two like five and seven year old. Um, so they have cabin fever one and we're, we're paused on our permit. We have the permit, but because we want to relocate, we're paused to, um, yeah, I think they, they would volunteer to work with the neighbors about it and our civil engineer to solve it. All currently as the design is, we meet the requirements for tier one approval by the states. We're not required to have retention basin or cistern or that on the site. Um, but this water, which we're basically, we're a pass through like all our water currently and from the previous project and that goes was going to the street anyway. But I think we can certainly commit to work on this, this swale that comes through the property. And I think for that piece, even like a retention basin or, you know, some kind of thing isn't going to help a lot. Like it's flowing like a stream still from the rain that happened that like it flows a lot. So, but we, we certainly commit to. Is there a storm drain system? I see a sewer system. I'm, I can't see the SD, which I normally expect for storm drain. All the hardscape areas and roof areas and all that. No, no, out in the street. Yes, there it's their curbs and. Um, is there a storm drain underground yes, yes, pipe? Yes, there is. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes. All of the current. Um, the proposal right here, all the SDs are going from the building and the downspouts and the surrounding landscape into the existing storm drain on Stone Meadow. Okay, so you're already feeding it, right? You're not yes. going directly in. Yes, okay. right. So the only thing that's sheet flowing off of it is from the garage and the driveway, 
there's a curb there that prevents it from going south and going onto the street. Yeah. That's, um... So most of the water that's coming from 618 in kind of a river flow, that swell is kind of coming onto our property, but also bypassing it and going to the driveway of the neighbor to the south um, and then feeding the landscape slopes from left to right. Um, and it just Dissip down the it dissipates at the end of that. Yeah. yeah. William, do you want us to make a motion which puts you in a position to be appealed or do you want to give it two weeks and see what you can come up with first? I think we're going to commit to work with the neighbors, so I guess. Um, because I think that if you do what I think you may end up doing, it's going to affect rating quantities, landscape plan, I think, maybe, we'll see, which would therefore mean that what you build is not what we approve unless you take a couple of weeks to get it figured out. And uh, it's up to them what they want to do. All right. All votes for continuing. I'm I'm have I'm abstaining okay. at this point. But I want <laughs> neighbors, I want to say something. Uh, I do live in Montecito. I live on a small street, nowhere near as nice as yours, called Chelem Way. And there's a Chelem Creek that comes through from Westmont and down. And there's a house right there, and it's gotten destroyed, not destroyed, but destroyed twice in the last two years. They got County of Santa Barbara money to correct that. Talk to the supervisor. Talk to Public Works, talk about all this and see if as a neighborhood, you can rally them together to improve the drainage system. Literally last week, they finished putting in another pipe at this critical spot. So they may or may not be able to do it, but I think that we all know that it's getting worse. So if you could work as a team, as a neighborhood, they're gonna, they ask for two weeks, so you've got two weeks and then come back, full board, preliminary final and we will go from there how's that for everybody is that okay so, so good luck with everything so i'll move for a continuance with the applicant to study the um drainage system and landscape plan and how that might affect okay. is there a second please second any further discussion all those in favor aye all those opposed. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, ladies. Item number three, 551 Crocker Sperry. Just so that everybody knows, item four and five have been continued. So after this item, we're going to go to item six. Okay. So, Britt, are you here, please? I am here. Good. Okay, this is a pretty straightforward um, project. It's a 87 square foot addition that's located in the center of the lot and doesn't really impact the privacy to the neighbors. Um, we're at an 83% of the floor area ratio. The architecture uh, was reviewed and approved by Burnham Wood a &L Committee in December. Landscape plans were updated uh, since we made this submittal. <clears throat> the landscape was uh, planned Concept was approved by the ANL committee on April 3rd, and then they had a subsequent meeting to review uh, hedge and uh, development uh, landscape improvements to the front of the property, and that was also approved. So we can go to the next page, and I can show you what the street looks like. All right, so on um, image four is, is the view from the street of the house prior to the, the new uh, proposed hedge being uh, put in. And then view 11 shows the um, the view where the, the proposed addition is toward the neighbor. And then <clears throat> uh, um, view 12 is uh, 
closer to the property line showing that that uh, there's no neighbor to neighbor uh, sight lines in the area of the proposed addition. Let's go to the next page. This page, or this is uh, the site plan showing uh, in uh, Coral or the, the addition there in the, at the center of the, uh, the lot. It's 70 feet from the property line. There's also a proposal to add a, uh, a garden wall that would enclose a, a generator. It's open to, uh, to above. It's only a, a privacy wall. And then extending that wall, uh, we are uh, proposing a, a, a tool shed of uh, about 77 square feet. The, both of the, the floor level of those is below the floor level of the uh, landscape that, that's on the street side. So the exposure of that wall is, is no greater than six feet. And it provides a, a sort of stepped uh, massing to the street from the uh, existing 10 foot wall that uh, we have separating the, the private uh, outdoor area of the house from the street. So we can go to the next uh page please this this page is the demo we're replacing all the doors and windows in the house uh so it's just showing that uh those are demoed and you can see that uh, the existing conditions uh were these greenhouse uh windows and they leak and they are um not appropriate to you know controlling the, the sunlight for uh this particular uh user's art collection so let's go to the next one this uh, is showing the, the area of the addition and all of our new doors and windows for the door and window schedule. It also shows the uh, the generator and the uh, tool shed. The generator walls are, are dark, even though they uh, do not have a roof. It's just the way the software uh, showed the images. So let's go to the next page. This is the um, roof plan showing the solariums deleted and new flat roofs uh, in their place. And then we'll go to the final page. Uh, this is uh, the elevations and uh, the top elevation. You can uh, the some of the graphics there are showing some landscape in front of the the wall that that um, encloses the generator and the new tool shed. But basically, it's just kind of bringing an, an extension of stepping down and a softening of the eleven foot wall around the corner and will not be visible from the street after the perimeter hedge is in place. So let's go to the last sheet then. Um, again, just showing where we're taking out the, the greenhouse sections, going to go with new Fleetwood windows and uh, details at the uh, parapet that, that match the flat uh, top of the uh, privacy wall to the front. So there's a continuity of details that we're, we're using uh, in the addition. So let's go to the last one. Just some details on the, uh, the parapet and the uh, door and windows. And then finally, we end up at the last page, A6. Uh, yeah, there's some uh, 3D views of the of the addition. So that, that's it. You have a landscape plan, but the landscape plan was superseded by uh, the one that went to Burnham Wood. We did not, we're not able to update it uh, for this set. That That's the, the gist of the project. Thank you. Uh, questions, Dave, please. No questions. Uh, Rob, please. No questions. Bill, please. Robert, please. No questions. Why a white roof? There's no white roof. It's a charcoal roof. Well, it says on the plan somewhere bright white. Where is that? I don't know. I saw it when I was reviewing it. So well, we're going to bring a. Oh, wait a second. Go back. The flat roof. That would be on the tool shed, which you well, cannot. I don't care where it is. Why bright white, please? Well, because it's a seven foot uh, interior volume and we're going to not condition it. So we don't want it to get like 110 degrees. Okay. Thank you. Uh, public comment. Is there anybody that would like to address the board on item number three, 551 Crocker Sperry Road, please? No request to speak. Okay, comments. Uh, we are on for concept today, Dave. And where should it go next, please? Uh, I think it's the proposed design is appropriate for the architecture and the lot context. Language of the so I support it. I see it. We don't have any comments. Rob, please, comments. Um, I agree with Dave. Comments. 
Dave's okay. comments. Bill, please, comments. Um, eight, eight, nine, real quick. Uh, this is more, and you're not going to really see this, but a, a suggestion or a, a question maybe, Britt, to you on that north elevation, the uh, parapet roof that is um, there, uh, the new one, would it would it make sense to extend that parapet over into the hip of the adjacent roofs? Or is that, you know, it looks like it's going to get water, you'll crick it, and you'll be able to certainly shift water around. Does it make more sense to overlap it? Does that make sense? I understand the question, yeah. Uh, basically, what we were doing on the addition was we're going to ledger on the outside of the, the wall and then uh, put the new roof framing on that. Uh, in conversations with Giffen and Crane who are building it, this was the, the solution that, that they felt made the most sense, but we can certainly uh, bring that question to them. Yeah, it's not a requirement because you're not really going to see it, but I just it looked like it might overlap a little better. That That's all. Everything else looks fine, and I can agree okay. as, that is, as Robert, preliminary. Robert, please. Uh, I think the project is fine. Um, I don't know that the whitish roofs will be seen from anywhere above given the location, so I'm uh, willing to uh, support it. And, uh, you know, there might be a ballast that goes on top of the white. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I can't remember your details specifically, but uh, it's, a, it's, it's a nice project, so. I'm good. I also think it's a nice project, but you know we're doing what we can to keep reflectivity and light from one property bouncing onto another. Is there a possibility to either change the roof of the shed or put in some insulation for all of about a hundred bucks? Yeah, I would definitely do that. That's easy. What? Yes, that's very easy to do. We'll do that. So I think this also ought to go on to preliminary final on consent. You're okay with that, right? Yeah, so nice job. Thank you. Um, if I don't even think it needs that much more drawings, do you? I think he was pretty much there, yeah. So let's get you preliminary final on consent at ASAP. If you could take a color at the, a stab at that roof, I'd appreciate it. Okay, well, item number, good. thanks, Britt. Item yeah, number four. Four and five have both been continued. So we're now on to item number six, 1795 San Leandro Lane. This is Country Crane. Uh, they want to do a small kindergarten addition. Heidi, are you with us or somebody else? I am here along with the architect, Sean Godkin. Um, yeah, we have a pretty simple, straightforward addition project here to the kindergarten. The kindergarten was part of the master plan and was a replacement building back in 2011, uh, probably the fifth phase of the crane plan build out over time. Um, very minor. Sean will walk you through the proposal. There's one uh, sycamore tree that has less than a 1% encroachment, which will be protected for the project and our Arbus report was submitted with our application and we're happy to present the plans and answer your questions. Thank you. Sean? Great, thanks Heidi. Yeah, hi everybody, this is Sean. Uh, so basically we've got about 1,250 or so square net square feet of an existing building uh, onto which we're trying to add an addition of about 214 net square feet. Uh, really, it's just a request by the school to get more space for the kindergarten group of kids they have, uh, some more wall space for the teachers, uh, just to make a better, more spacious uh, learning environment. Um, as far as the proposal, uh, it is quite straightforward. Like uh, Heidi said, uh, we are building underneath some very large roof overhangs uh, on the east side of the building. Uh, it's basically the was the or is the front porch uh, entry. Uh, veranda that we're building the bulk of the addition under and then in the back uh, as a part of the same um, what will be made a larger uh, classroom space uh, it's kind of an access slash utility pad uh, that we're building on top of um, to get uh, some more square footage there so no change to the roof uh, no real change to the exterior elevations as far as 
you know, how they look uh, front on. Um, and that's kind of the proposal. If you want to flip through, I can um, answer any questions you might have. Questions, Rob, please. I have no questions. Bill, please. Questions? No questions. Dave, questions? No questions. Robert? No questions. Have no questions. Public comment. Is there anybody that would like to address the board on item number six, 1795 San Leandro Lane, please? Okay. No request. What? Nobody? Okay, thank you. Okay, so we are on for concept today. What should we do? Where should we go next? Uh, comments, Rob. Oh. Okay, Bill, comments. Yeah, I, I think what you're proposing is very minor and uh, fits right in. Looks like it's part of the original building, so I don't have a problem moving forward. Dave, comments, please. I agree with this simple intro. Robert. Uh, I agree. It's a very modest uh, proposal. And, um, you know, we got to take care of our kids. So I think it's a nice gesture and good for Montecito. And I agree. So uh, preliminary final on consent. Thank you both Sean and Heidi. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Good job. So item number seven, uh, 743 San Ysidro Road. Michael, are you with us, please? I'm here. Um, you have a project that we have reviewed at least a couple of times and you- Yes. Have do a minor revision to it. Would you like to, oh, there's a, no, there's no memo on this one. Would you like to go ahead, please? Sure. Um, looks like you might have an older set of drawings. So if you go to the, um, if you go to the drawing set there. So this is effectively just an infill. There's, if you go to the main house, the, um, this is and so this page is the one. So there's a little L shape and in the bottom um lower left, left corner. hand corner. Yep. So that is currently just an exterior patio. It, from an interior perspective, it's very awkward and strange. So the client wants to infill that and make a much um more uh livable interior space with a dining room on that side. So effectively the project is to just infill that uh that breezeway. If you go to the next slide, it kind of shows that it's really like a 200 square foot addition. Um, the FAR is, I think it's going from 119 um, to 122, 3% change. We have the neighborhood study from previous um, accessory structures that we've done on this property that kind of show that we're we're well within the, um, the neighborhood context. I know it's over the 110%, but um, this is really covered area so we're not adding to the bulk scale mass of the the building we're just simply infilling uh if you go to the next slide um so this is where you can kind of see uh image number 13 shows that uh the arched openings effectively we're just bringing the the glazing to to align with the arches on the um image number 10 you can see an, a condition right now where there's a there's a uh if you kind of zoom into number 10, you can see the the condition that we would effectively be emulating, just copying the exact same fenestration with the arched um, windows, matching the same color, um, just like for like doing that exact same detail on those arched openings that are existing. Um, and if you go to the, um, the next couple of slides, you can see the elevations that we're proposing. So very simple, just a, a straightforward infill to the existing house that's um, already covered. We're just we're just aligning the glazing to the arched openings and, and capturing that interior space. If you go to the next couple slides, uh, next one, next one, sorry, I'm trying to get to the elevations. This just more enlarged plans. 
Um, and then keep going. So here's the existing elevation and there's the infill. Uh, the, the light fixtures that are on the, uh, if you go up or try down, there's a couple of existing sconce lights that are staying. We're just leaving them in, in place. So we're not proposing any new lighting. We're just keeping the existing there and just infilling with um, some uh, wall assembly and glazing. And that's that's it. And actually, maybe if you go to the next couple of slides, you can see it on the on the west side, the next slide down. There's also um, a couple of more openings. Is there only an uh, go up one? There should be another elevation on the west side. Maybe up another slide. No, we're not showing that elevation. I thought it was in there. Um, but the same condition, there's on the west side, there's two arches that we're just infilling. And that's the project. Hey, microphone, please. And can, for me, microphone. And can you go to the FAR study? Also, not that one. The their FAR sheet up higher in the plans, right, right here. Can you zoom in on this? You'll notice that what Michael did here was that he took a circle. He took a circle, which is what I'm suggesting that we do in the future. And he grabbed a number of properties. And I think it's just above this is the table. David? Yeah. And he did the table like this with the exception that he had this property right here at, one, at 153 twice. The table was perfect. And then can you put my the thing that I sent over. So I took this as an example, just as, to see what it would happen with this proposal I sent out to everybody. Not that one, the other one I sent over today. I sent over two emails, 743. Okay, so no. Seven forty-three. That's it. Okay. okay, so this basically replicates his data. He's requesting one twenty-two, which you add up there, and so the the average mean is somewhere around one fifteen twenty-two for the neighborhood, somewhere in that area. Okay, next, and we'll see that even at sixty, he's right there. He's on, under it. So with that neighborhood, what it says in certain neighborhoods, the FAR can be larger than 110 if you do a study. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, even with all of these smaller properties, there is a concentration enough up there that Excel tells us that the 60 percentile, which is this reddish color, it's still underneath that. So I just wanted to show you this in action. So on the sixty percent of the of the applicants, uh, the other addresses is that what it, is that what? Yeah, when you read the thing that I sent over, it talks about percentile. We've all heard that your kids' intelligent is in the top twenty percent, or you know, percentile is what that is. Okay, and so this is sixty percent of all properties are larger. Or are, are that size or smaller, 70% are that, the green line, are that size or smaller. So figuring out which of these numbers will take into account going from gross to net, because we'll kind of put it into this number, whichever one we pick. But it shows that there are neighborhoods like what Michael did that easily qualify because it's a larger neighborhood. Mm -hmm. and he's demonstrated that, and he's done it in a dispassionate way by just taking 100% of the properties that are around his property. I think the only thing, John, that, I, that uh, was irritating about the table that I put together is that it didn't spit out the number 
as a hundred and twenty two percent. It just shows it as like uh, the tw the the delta over a hundred percent. Yeah, I, I I like your one here. It's nice. I rectified it. Well, yeah. The question I have, John, in this chart we're looking at there, the three that are outside of the seventy percent, would would our decision be that well, you're above seventy percent of the neighborhood, and then we would make our decision based on that. Yeah, well, we will discuss we, that yeah. in two weeks, okay? But I wanted to show how this worked in practice. And I, as I said, I think he did an excellent job on circling everything around. Mad genius of all That's this. the nicest thing you've ever said to me, John. So I appreciate that. Uh, I have I have no found that the assessor's records are notoriously wrong. Yeah, okay, well, always low. That's all we have. Okay. Uh, any anything further, Michael? Please. No, that's it. It's all okay. Done. So this is Bill. Questions. No, no questions. Robert. Questions. No questions. Bob. Questions. No questions. Dave, questions, and I have no questions. Public comment, is there anybody that would like to address the board on item number seven, 743 San Ysidro Road, please? Uh, no request to speak, and I just want to relay a comment that uh, Kimberly texted to me, and she said that uh, she's having a little trouble hearing Rob and Dave, so if you could just speak closer to your mics. Okay, we are on for concepts, so we have no approval that can be given tonight just because of the way it's agendized. Where, how do we feel? Where should it go next? Bill, comments, please. I would grant it concept review. We don't have that. So what do you think of this? We, we can say, I love this project. Let's go to preliminary final on consent. Yeah, that's okay, <laughs> Robert. Yeah, preliminary final on consent. Rob. Um, I agree with that. Is there, there's no landscape component to this, I take it? Nope. Um, hey. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I agree. And I agree. Nice job, Michael. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Okay, item number eight, we are moving right along. It is 2.42, if my clock is right. Natalie, are you with us or Tom? There is a memo which basically says it meets all the requirements. You want me to read it? Uh, all comprehensive plan, land use, and Montecito plan policies and requirements have been met. Okay. Natalie, are you with us? Tom, please. Item number eight. I see. I see Natalie online. Just Natalie, turn off, turn on your mic. I caught him off guard. We're moving along. Natalie. Yeah, yeah. Well. Okay. So, and next meeting, apparently, we only have a few items, except maybe a long discussion item. Okay. So the comments were: east elevation is awkward and unresolved. Design a deck enclosure on east elevation fields, top heavy restudy. So there it is in the upper left hand corner. Um, so we're on for preliminary and final. What do you want to do? I mean, do we, Natalie, are you there, please? Yeah, okay. So we're going to jump over this item and give you a chance to get on. Um, Kathleen, are you online, please, Volpe? I'm here. Oh, Tom, you're here? Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, not a problem. Okay, so uh, what did you do? What are we up to? We're trying to get a preliminary final if it meets our approval. So what's up? Okay, so uh, this is Tom Oxner, project architect. Good afternoon. Um, I've got a um, – I'm responding to two – comments from the last meeting and what the board was having trouble with at the last meeting was the treatment of the east elevation it was awkward we were trying to 
get a little more space in the family room. But after the comment, we chose just to push the wall of the family room back flush to that whole facade that cantilevers out above the three garage doors. And that simplifies um, and um, addresses the, the two comments. The two comments were, I have them in front of me, uh, east elevation is awkward and unresolved. And then the second comment refers to the same situation in a different way. Design of deck enclosure on east elevation feels top heavy restudy. Um, so we can go to the L of the east elevation as well as the um, the uh, the visual simulations, and we can um, let's go to the I model can point this the out. simulations. I think that yes. So we. It's, we can see on this plan here, uh, the new family room. Okay, there's a photo of the existing. So basically that balcony that is above the two left garage doors is being uh, captured for interior space. Uh, the lower left corner shows an image of, of how we resolved it. We pushed the mass back in so that there's one surface that is now cantilevering out over the garage, whereas before, there was the left portion of that mass was projecting out beyond um, to the same degree that the upper right hand photo shows that the balcony guardrail was. That was projecting out a foot. And when we enclosed it, the comment was that, yeah, that doesn't look right. Um, so our resolve is what you see on that lower left and the upper left. We also added a, a corbel um, to the left side of that uh, craftsman uh, gable truss there that you see to complete that side. It was um, it was missing, as you can see from the upper right hand photo. Um, there uh, there was a different you know th there was a post supporting that and not that bracket detail. Are you done there, Tom? Excuse me? Are you completed with your presentation, please? Uh, yes, and I can answer any questions, yes. Okay, uh, item number eight, questions, Dave. No questions. Robert, questions. No questions. Rob, questions. No questions. Bill, questions. So you're here for preliminary and final. Yes. You colors are going to match, right? And, and do you have lighting are you adding lighting i don't see any lighting so maybe you're not we are i if we go to the materials sheet i just want to confirm i i don't recall without seeing that sheet I have here. a picture it's, shown does he is he details a little further I'm looking it's for getting colors. close oh wait there there uh, is i it saw just finished. passed it Finish schedule there. Look. Okay. Is anyone near the end or near the beginning? Near the end, I think it was. Well, I think it's four. Uh, it's there. towards the beginning. Finish material index. Is that maybe the there? third or fourth sheet in? Tom, does this have your colors on it? The exterior yeah, finish sure. material index. Um, th there's a page that's dedicated to the exterior finishes here. It's towards the front of the match. set of drawings. Existing. That's good enough. Okay, so Bill, is, those are my questions. And I have no questions. We uh, public comment. Is there anybody that would like to address the board on item number eight, three one one six Eucalyptus Road? Is it Eucalyptus Hill Road or Eucalyptus Road? Eucalyptus Hill Road, I believe. Yeah, I think it is too. Um, anybody, please. No request. Okay, we are on for preliminary final comments. Dave. I think they successfully solved the issue that we brought up in the last review. And the project plans appear to me to be complete. I have details the, so I can support it. Robert. I also appreciate the uh, effort to resolve the sort of awkward 
east elevation. It looks yeah, good right. now. So I would also, uh, uh, it's on for prelim final. Yeah, I would grant it that. Rob. Um, I, I basically agree with the comments. When I look at the um, elevation, part of it looks like uh, the corbels work. <laughs> part of it looks like it'd still be nice to have something go to the ground. But when you look at the 3D modeling, I think it really works well at that point so i i support the project no yeah i can grant final to you preliminary final preliminary final. and i have no further comments tom thank you it's a obviously challenging prompt property from a design point of view but you know sometimes you end up with the taj mahal and sometimes you end up with a nice project that doesn't quite reach that level. So, is there a motion for a preliminary final? Motion to grant preliminary at final approval for Hill Road. As submitted. As submitted. Is there a second, please? I'll second that. Any further discussion, please? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, last item. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, Kevin, are you with us? I'm Stefan from Shul Studios. Excuse me. Yes, Kevin. and I'm here. I'm here too. Um, okay. Greetings. So let can we go to the plans? We've seen this plan several different times. We saw it as a uh, just a remodel of the house, and then they came in, and apparently as part of that, this was an illegally created garage, a carport. So somebody along the way said, everything's great, but get rid of the carport. Mm -hmm. And so now they've got the house in, in construction or is it finished? I'm not quite sure. We're closing on construction in July. Yes. And so I guess the owners have said, you know what? I really would like a garage. And so it's going to be in the setbacks. It's got to have... MPC review, and there is an exceedance on the FAR, which I did not fully figure out until this yesterday or this morning when I looked at these plans. So, and there's a letter today. So let me start with the planner comment, and then you guys can make your presentation. We'll try to figure out what to do from there. The applicants are seeking a modification to allow for the reduction of the secondary front yard setback along Pomar Lane from 25 feet to 16 feet, six inches to allow for the construction of a new detached uh, car garage. The modification would result in an eight foot, six inch front setback reduction. Persuade to such and such article the maximum allowable setback reduction is 20%, and the maximum front yard setback depth re reduction as measured from the right of way or easement line is 16 feet, six inches. The proposed project meets these requirements. The applicant is asking for pro positive comments in support of the setback modification it doesn't say that because they're going to the MPC. Okay, so that's that. There is a memo, there is a letter, and Kevin or whomever, who would like to get started with this, please? Uh, I can. Uh, so uh, we presented, uh, thank you, members of the board. Uh, we presented uh, two weeks ago for conceptual. Uh, the comments were to uh, basically examine enlarging the garage. Uh, so we've done that. We pushed uh, one foot uh, west and one foot east, uh, respectively, to increase it to be a more functional garage space, um, as well as to come back with full details. So we've included more details and then aligned those details to the uh, existing resident, uh, main residence. So if you go through, also our FAR calc, I got the revised one. Uh, we are at 144 um, there. So... It is, uh, it's basically because of the detached allowance that we had and as well as the large main house. So 
Uh, that's the existing uh, corner condition where the new garage would be located. And if you scroll down, these are our landscape plans, basically tying in the existing um, main house landscape plan. All the irrigation will be connected to the existing. Um, if you scroll down, um, it's just the existing plans. Uh, keep going. Existing elevations. And then here's the proposal. So uh, the proposed garage uh, sits right along that uh, modified setback. Um, we pushed it again uh, to the east and basically that pushed it one foot past uh, the bedroom window, which we were trying to avoid, but to satisfy having a larger garage, uh, we had to kind of encroach that view corridor there. Uh, we're also including, of course, the uncovered uh, new trash enclosure, uh, basically planned north. Um, and so that's included in an a attached a trellis uh, that matches the existing trellis of the main house. Um, other than that, uh, we've scrolled down. There's some more space. This is the existing images of the main house and basically we're replicating those details. Uh, there's a couple, there's four exterior sconces that are really low in um, uh, light quality. Um, they're just to provide a little bit of accent lighting. Um, there they match the main house, the details for the doors and windows um, of the main house. These steel doors will have the same uh, detailing around them. And then the trellis will have uh, cedar fins to match the main house, as well as the parapet cab matches. Uh, the front, the garage door will be a uh, red cedar garage door. Uh, no windows are glazing. And then here's our details for that door and window schedule. So. So are you done with your presentation, please? Yes. Okay. Questions, please. Bill. Was it like a scope? Um, I remember looking at this, but I can't remember uh, if you were to push the garage toward the pool. Is that the pool there? Mm -hmm. A lot of squares. Uh, and that's Shay's lounges there. If you were to pull it out of the setback, uh, how would that, is that going to interfere? You got a, a grade change there mm -hmm. and all sorts of things going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is the reason, you know, I guess we've got to find a reason why we should allow you to do this and that it's a constrained lot. I know we, you have two front setbacks. So what, uh, what can you tell me that would help me uh, allow you to go forward with this position? Uh, we've pretty much examined every other location with, uh, within the lot, and this is really the most ideal. Um, our first presentation was uh, at the front uh, basically planned right uh, north uh, basically at the corner of pomar and um, san leandro and that's just not the best place so uh, per mbar's comment we uh, placed it at the rear of the property um, which seems to be the most ideal and then the rest of the property is right up against the property line of their uh, the client's neighboring property um, and so this seemed to be the best the location as well as providing access to pomar I guess my question is not so much position on the site. I like its position on the site in terms of its setback from Pomar. If you were to push it toward the pool, would that be, create a hardship? Uh, it would basically block completely the view out of the bedroom windows um, that are right there. And we kind of wanted to allow for as much natural light coming into those bedrooms as possible. And it would feel too much like a pinched corridor um, of that garage right up against the house like that. We wanted to basically avoid that at all costs. Building, it does bury the building. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Dave, questions, please. Um, I think just for my memory, this condition exists in this neighborhood. Our garages are on the street like this. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, up and down Pomar, there's uh, garages off the road like this. And there was a change in the FAR? A slight change from uh, 137 to 144. Okay, so what they did, right? Mm -hmm. 
their FAR that they submitted on the plans did not show that there's an existing garage there. So they showed it as being removed. And this column, rather than being zero, was minus 510, which reduced all of these numbers and knocked that down to 137. So, you know, I looked at it and I said, well, <laughs> you can't have a minus number in the last column. So we adjusted it, and I adjusted it, and I sent it up to them. Mm -hmm. So I'm not so sure that carport was ever permitted in the first place. I can't remember that, but I think it was not. It was not. Or they were required to take it down. Is that it? Dave, is that it? Robert, question, please. No questions. Rob, please. Forgive me, I'm just trying to understand. So what, so these are two properties and that you have the driveway basically goes across both properties? What's correct? The owners own both properties. If you go to our uh, cover page, right, uh, that shows both properties adjoining there. So basically they have what's considered their guest house is um, right next to it at 1, uh, 1675. And they, and they allow the driveway to, to go across both properties. And then... <laughs> And then is there parking up front? Is that in the setback, those two cars up there? Oh, they are. On San, Le San Leandro? Yeah. And that's an existing? You are not permitted to have required parking in Ever. the front yard setback. Mm -hmm. But this is not required. Okay. All right. That's, I just wanted to understand that aspect of it. So thank you. So Kimberly, are you there, please? Or Kathleen, either? Both. I am here. Kathleen is not. Doesn't sound like she has questions. Coastal zone. Is there any requirement for covered parking in the coastal zone, please? No, there is not. Two spaces covered or uncovered. But they can't be in the front yard setback. Not be in the front or side yard setbacks, correct. Okay. And so we're going to find out here in a minute. I'm going to read the letter. There's a neighbor to the west. Hang on, back to the other plan, please. There's a neighbor to the west that says, hey, guys, you're going to back right out onto Pomar. I think it was grandchildren ride bikes here. This is going to be unsafe. Can't you do something else? So my question is, because of the FAR and because of the lack of visibility that's inherent in a car, in a garage over a carport or over a carport or no covering at all, why is it beneficial to the community to allow you to do this, please? From your point of view, why is it beneficial to the community? I think uh, it's beneficial to the community um, as well as the owners that this is an amenity that most properties have within uh, the radius of this house. Um, most have covered garages and uh, it's something that to have cars stored away is something that is ideal. And that's basically what we're trying to argue is uh, this is something that every other house has and we, we would like this. To have the same. Can I also add? Um, I believe um, the issues are coming from the immediate neighbor that does actually have that garage um, in alignment um, to Pomar, and there was some acrimony um, of recent with regard to that, and they're trying to resolve that. But fundamentally, it's you know the carport that was existing there for for so many decades was illegal, but that was far more dangerous. Than what we're proposing here, um, because that was right on the um, on, on the edge of the road, um, so it was there was zero setback whatsoever. And so again, it's partially precedence here we're dealing with. As Stefan had mentioned, that this is something that is seen um, um, uh, throughout the neighborhood. So, um, Kimberly, did you say Kathleen is not online? 
I don't believe she is. I okay. she didn't respond. Okay, so um, uh, yes, please go ahead. Sorry, four foot six distance from the house. Does that allow the zoning? Kathleen, uh, Kimberly, four foot six. I apologize. I can't hear Dave. Can you repeat the question for me? Is that they currently, the way I understand the plans, they're proposing the garage to be four foot six from the residents. And I was wondering if the zoning allows for that proximity. Um, I know in the past it's been required that either the garage is detached or further apart. Yes, that is correct. Um, I, I, and I, I'm not sure. I think it might be five feet in Article Two, as opposed to the standard ten feet in Montecito. But I would have to look at both zoning ordinances. That's my so memory. There is too. some separation, and that modification may need to cover both the setback and the building separation. Okay, and so my last question to you, Kimberly, is: It says we're on for preliminary approval. Are we on for a preliminary approval or are we on for comments only to the planning commission? I believe when it is a modification, um, I can never get this straight. I believe it is, I believe you are making um, comments. Only. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember. I, I'm gonna, I'll try and reach out to Kathleen and see if she's available. Typically, with modifications before they go to the planning commission, we do have the BAR uh, action. make okay. preliminary action. Yeah. Okay. Thank so you, David. Then I have one. I have one more question. Yes, please. please, Rob. Um, to the architects. Um, so did you look at just? It looks like there's some room, um, between the um, you know where you have that trellis piece. Could you help me understand as to maybe why the garage can't move back a little more? Or what's what's the what he wants to do? They're going to answer by looking at the floor plan, Dave. David. Yeah, the the kids' bedrooms are back there fundamentally, okay. and it's just they'd be just looking out at a blank wall, unfortunately. And we would just be um, oh, right it there. Would just be a, the the day you can see now through the both windows from each of the bedrooms. So ultimately, um, they would just lose. We're already encroaching somewhat into that. Um, so they're trying to um, keep that south facing um, openings uh, for for natural right. light in the spaces. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so I have no further questions, I don't think. And public comment. There is a public comment letter from somebody. I am writing to you with regards to a proposed detached two-car garage to be built on Palmar Lane for Alex and Michael Perry. Their address is such and such. The reason for my concern is that it is to be built directly across from my garden gates on an extremely narrow lane. This little lane has already experienced heavy afternoon congestion from commuters leaving Montecito and looking for sh shortcuts to the freeway. Our small lanes have already surrendered over the last few years to many new additions, causing them to be far from their original small ta town charm that drew us here. There had previously been a 1960s carport built without permits in the same location and thankfully was never used by the previous owner. The setback would have to be quite a ways into the property in order for it to make for a safe and visible exit onto this little lane. I'm afraid it does not appear by any means that the needed room for a proper setback exists. There, there does, however, appear to be more than ample room for it to be constructed on their larger San Leandro en entrance. I assume she's talking about on the adjoining lot, but I'm not sure. We also have young children who ride their scooters outside our garden gates. Having cars come out towards these gates is not only unsafe, it's dangerous. 
We love our community and have always been good neighbors, but please hear our voices on this issue. It's too small a lane. Please confirm receipt of this email. Okay, anybody else like to address the board on item number nine, 1671 San Leandro Lane, please? No additional requests. Okay, it's back to us. I guess we're supposed to do a preliminary approval and they're looking for positive comments. Bill. Lucky Bill. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Uh, did we look at a FAR study on this too? I don't think we ever did. And I feel like we need to have that. This 144, I know that that was already Carport, though, but it was never there. It was done illegally. Determined. So, but they have no covered parking, which we all kind of like. So, it's let's see. The they idea? got down to one thirty-seven by incorrectly locating that. So it's the existing is probably somewhere around one forty. It would get existing already. Existing with, with just the right now, no carport. Oh. If it was 137 with the carport subtracted out, my guess is it's about 140 with, with like nothing. Existing. Oh, down to 144. That's a guess. I mean, you'd have to see the exact yeah. number. John, if they attached the garage, would that lower the building? Uh, technically, you know, there's the question. Does it, at the end of the day, does it make any difference? No, but I'm just, I'm just putting it in there. We are then down to 130. I don't know. It's probably 140 or so. I'd have to do the study. I don't know. Yeah, this is a uh, board. I just, I was just, the client just reached out to me just to reiterate that that letter is from across the road where they do have their garage right on the edge of Pomar and their guest house as well. So um, ultimately, uh, you know, it's it, that should be taken into account um, that they're obviously get full use of that um, the opportunities to be uh, building right on the edge of the road whilst this is directly across from them. So I would argue then that safety is an issue. Then if that's the case, you know, on the other side as well, that of course they've got zero setback and they've been given every opportunity to utilize that and uh, to our knowledge, the the actual when we went back on some of the records of the photos, they did use the carport as part of um, their uh, usage. So I just wanted to make that clear. So, um, I mean, as I look at the plan too, and I know we looked at this already once before, but um, I mean, the the bedrooms do have windows out potentially could have windows going out the side, not, and then you could pull it up forward. Well, let me interrupt here. Yeah. Okay. So either Kevin or Stefan, I hope I'm saying that properly. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to a year and a half ago when you first brought this project through and it was sort of a little, you know, not really well constructed project and you wanted to bring it some order into I don't know if Modern is right, but that that period, did you add any square feet at that time? I can't remember. We did not. We were actually removed about 280 square feet. There was an old attached sunroom where the new trellis is, and we had to remove that. But you did add a kitchen, outdoor kitchen at some point. Correct. Okay, so... And the case you want to make then is we about swapped one for the other, take mm -hmm. out 200 here and put in 200 there, plus or minus. Correct. That's so what the case is that you want to make is we are not increasing the density over what it has been in the past, even by enclosing the car, the garage. Correct. Because carports Correct. and garages are the same. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to get that out there. Well, that helps because I, you know, I, a historical point of view, right? Yeah, I think I can support the 144 FAR at this point because it's only adding four, you know, uh, points to the whole thing. So I, I'm not a problem with that. So the real issue is whether or not 
we see fit that uh, garage in the set. And just to, just to reiterate, we've been meticulously sensitive to both the architecture and the property as well. And from, um, from all perspectives in dealing with the language, understanding consistency historically in place. So we just feel like we did reduce that FAR and because obviously of the illegalities of the carport, which we didn't know initially going into this project, um, we just felt like there was it was it was unfair of having to remove that with not knowing that. So we just feel like that shifting of square footage is is acceptable under the current conditions. So what I'm getting at, I think this will be in your favor really, is that you know if the car uh, garage was further from the street, would it make it any safer? I, I don't really think so. You still have to back out of that driveway uh, and be careful when you do with backup mm -hmm. cameras and uh, blind spots, you just gotta go slow. Uh, it being closer to the street, I don't think you're still backing out onto the street. There's there's not much else you can do without taking more of the land. David, there's a I think it's on the landscape plan. It shows a trash enclosure in the street or next to the street, which would negate part of what Bill is saying. So right there. In terms of the visibility up, of up, that, up maybe. In terms of being able to see out and around. Yeah, well, the, the trash may be... And the site walls, you know, those might be some things we should consider in terms of, and I'll let maybe some of the other members chime in on that, but but it, uh, you know, it'd be better to have it not such a hallway corridor backing out of there. In terms Can I also reiterate that th this is actually going to be storing some old classic cars, that their day-to-day -day usage is actually going to be from San Leandro. So this isn't going to be a daily use pull in and out. It's just there's some delicate the delicate vehicle that needs to be housed in that um, rather than letting that sit out and be exposed. We do need to look at maybe they're not going to be the only owners in the future. So true. But uh, that being said, I, I think I could support the garage in this location. I think that maybe some thought of behind uh, reducing some of the site walls on the sides, pulling the crash maybe back further somehow out of the view line so that maybe you've got a 42 inch high wall there instead of a five or six foot high wall might be better. Uh, and that with that, I can support the FAR and I think the garage location because I don't think it'll make a whole lot of difference. And you're constrained lot, you've got two front setbacks. So, so for those reasons, I think- I'm, And we'd be comfortable accommodating that um, modification to reduce the wall size to pull that back so there's better visibility. That's all. Well, it's our turn now. So, Dave, turn. please comments. Yeah. I, um, given that this is the overall project density isn't changing, I can support the FAR. And I was hesitant about the garage and the proximity to the street, but that is an existing condition. Uh, regarding the safety, I just wonder, I'm not as solid on, on pushing the garage out just so that window can have uh, a view. I don't think that's a very nice view. It would give you more direct sunlight, but I think there's other ways you could have a skylight or a window on the west wall. So my question in my mind is, is it would it be better to have a 20 foot setback from the street so that a car could pull off the street completely before the garage door comes up uh, to make it safer um, and also give you a little more distance to, when you're backing out to view. Um, so that'd be the one question and I'm not sure yet. You done there, Dave? Okay, Robert, please. Uh -huh. uh, this project to me is a bit of a conundrum. Um, what I worry about is seeing the rear ends of cars parked in front of the garage door. You know, I, I feel garage doors ideally should not be visible from the street, but I know that, you know, there's a bit of a pickle here. Uh, but if it's just used for storage, 
how do we keep that little drive clear? Where are the cars going to park? I, I think that's what I'd like to focus on is the, the aesthetic of the neighborhood and not seeing, you know, cars stacked up right off the street. So, um, I, well, I'm, I'm trying to remember what is the distance? It looks like it's about 20 feet from the garage door. Six, Six. to the, to the, to the, to the well, but that you could park two cars right there, and they probably will. Um, and how is that going to look? Is is my my only concern? Other than that, I'm, you know, and as Bill said, it's you know who knows who's going to buy it next, and uh, so I guess what I'm saying is I don't mind the garage being closer to the street because, in fact, if it was even closer, it would prevent cars from parking right there. So, it's a, again, it's a conundrum. Uh, but I think, in general, I support it as presented and um, just hope it works out. Bob. Comments. Yes. Um, I would support. Well, I still believe that you could move it back two feet, another three feet, and then get cars so that they're not. There's no chance of if they park there of them hanging off into the alley. But with that said, um, if you were to leave it in the same spot, then uh, my condition for supporting it would be that trash enclosure i think you turn 90 degrees and slide that back in any landscape and any site wall all that there needs to be like a, a view cone um you know maybe consistent with what the city of santa barbara kind of uh, dictates using that as a as a model and so that uh, the safety issues resolved by basically having visual clearance coming up and down um, that alley. So I think you'd have to reconfigure the trash enclosure and make sure the landscaping doesn't impede. But um, so I'd support support it, but I would feel much better about it if it was just moved back another couple of feet. Move so, back which way? Um, away from the street. Sorry. Be because of the fact that there is windows on one side that the children um, have, okay. so it's not like they're living in a cave entirely. So, thank you. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, we had nine items on the agenda, two dropped off, so that's seven plus four concept. So this is number 11 for me today. And this is without a doubt the one that I am not envious about being on this board. I think it's very difficult. I think that Robert's comment about let's push it closer to the street to prohibit anybody from parking there was actually quite a good comment. Yes, please. No. I don't know how it's enforced. Um, Kimberly. Can that condition be applied? Is that? Can you please repeat the condition? Sorry. Can can this project, if we approved it the way it's proposed, could we condition the approval that they cannot park on that driveway between the garage and the street? And could that be enforced? Um, we'd have to have a condition, a nexus for that condition, which could be safety, but enforcing that condition would be nigh on impossible. Yeah, but it could be done by Nate through neighbor complaint, right? It can be. It can be. So, you know, at the end of the day, I don't live anywhere near here. I almost never drive this. I mean, maybe once in the last 10 years. So I'm not going to be the one. The one that's going to do it is the person across the street. So 
I mean, I would add for the nexus argument that we would want roads to weigh in about whether or not that is truly a mechanism by which safety could be improved. That what? That that, that is indeed a condition that enhances the safety of the, the project. If, if not parking in the driveway somehow pro provides a more safe um, experience, we would need some nexus to add that condition to the land use issue. I think we were coming at it from an aesthetic point of view, not, not a safety. Uh, yeah, I, I did mention yeah. the safety originally that, you know, if you had 20 feet to pull off onto before you got raised your garage door, but really it's more not, as Robert said, not having cars parked right on the street. From an aesthetic uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Forward can, can certainly, the VAR could certainly add that condition to their approval or support. Sorry, board, the client just um, reached out and said she's willing to put a sign that says no parking in that area and will not be personally using that space to ensure, and they will ensure themselves that there's no one allowed to park in front of the in front of the, the garage itself. And they, they will do everything in their means to abide by that. Because they too are actually would like to maintain the, the, the clarity and safety of the neighborhood themselves. So they certainly are willing to align um, with that comment. Thank you. Do we propose the idea of uh, the material of the driveway being such that it wouldn't, can you do that? You know, plant or uh, run, running strips or something that, uh, you know, if you had a car parking on it would die and not look good. The oh, strips no. that they put out to stop speeders not to dope. blow out their tires. Yeah, <laughs> right, you have to line your tire. <laughs> one way so anyway back to me um i find myself in an unenvious position i almost never in fact i have never voted for a preliminary approval without a neighborhood study proving that it's okay now having said that um i historically it's kind of established this level but what it's doing from that point of view, it's rewarding misbehavior, as I say, because that airport should never have been there in the first place. So, um, and then I, when I was reviewing this yesterday, the comment I wrote to myself is, is it better for the community with or without this parking space, this covered parking area? So, I mean, I, well, no, no. That's a very myopic point of view. In three years, they sell it. Something happens, somebody needs to sell it. You know, they need to move somewhere and all of a sudden it's a whole different group. So, um, I don't know what to do with this. I, you know, anyway. So does anybody want to make a motion? I don't know if I'm going to vote for this thing or not. I would love to kick it up to the planning commission and make it their problem. <laughs> but if we have to, motion. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is your, dear members of the Moxville planning commission. Welcome to our world. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the pro that's what I was asking Kimberly is if we could just put it up there and say architecturally this and that these are the issues that we have, but we haven't confirmed it. I mean, but it sounds like we have to, the process requires that we take a stand and uh, one way or the other. So, are we in agreement that we would be okay with its position as it is if we can condition it so that you can't park in the driveway? Still, and that we I have the FAR issue, and my guess. See, one of the things is that um, well, what's that guy's name? The contractor that brings stuff through all the time. Decker, he did a project farther down San Leandro towards the trailhead, and I believe he was like one thirty-five, and he could not prove that one thirty-five was okay. To my satisfaction. So uh, maybe I have to vote now. 
they reduce it, but I don't know. So, gentlemen, I don't have to vote for it. I mean, is anybody willing to make a motion and see what happens? I mean, I, I think it feels like it's nicely nestled back there. And that's the one part that I guess when I looked at it, that was uh, appealing. Um, and I, but I, so I, that's where I was okay with it, with, you know, the, with, with the notion that they at least resolve the visual aspects of getting the trash out of there and kind of just creating a view order and making it nicely landscaped. Position it's okay. Are we all is there can we zoom out? You're you're on the close in page. There's another page that has the bigger picture on the property. Keep going up, I think. Right there. See, I'm not as concerned about people parking there, I think maybe as you are. They've got two in the front yard already over there next to San Leandro. They've got probably another two behind those cars and two in front of those cars if they're having any kind of a party. They've got two or three right in front of the front door. Mm -hmm. I mean, this property is well parked from an uncovered point of view, uncovered parking point of view. Um, so, What, what if they? What? Uh, what's just here from Rob? Quick, and then you can make a motion, please. They, they, well, my my mic on. This is maybe far out there, but but um, you know the thought was sliding the garage further back and getting it back closer to where it belongs, and then modifying within the process of this construction is then modifying the children's bedroom, and with a little another projection that kind of brings makes that a nicer space. Um, and um, so that you're kind of um, the, the reason for having the garage pushed out is because it's compromising the children's bedroom. So if you maybe enhance the children's bedroom a little bit then, and push the garage back, then you kind of um, solve that problem, I guess. Dave, did you want to make a mo give a shot at a motion, please? Make a motion for preliminary approval based on the following findings by the board. One, that for the FAR, the overall project density has not increased. Um, number two, the this garage condition specifically is prevalent in this neighborhood. And that three uh, safety modifications are made in that the site walls and trash area is reconfigured to be low in height and to meet the public work standards for driveway entrances to to um, provide proper viewing distance when backing out and I, height there, Dave. I, I don't know what it is a public works two or 36 I'd rather just refer to public works and let let them confirm that well 42 is what city allows it is, you know, that is a fact. Okay, 42 maximum height. Nothing, nothing higher than 42. In yeah. Zone. Max, okay. Yeah. And that the board is in, in further safety and aesthetic um, measure. Uh, the board would condition this approval that, that the driveway between the garage and the street is not used for parking. And it would be posted. And will be posted. Is there a second to that motion? I have a, a comment on that. Yep. Well, okay. I I I, I guess my I, I support most of the motion, but I don't okay. think there should be. Um, I think they have the ability to move the trash enclosure kind of further back and not have any sight walls, any kind of visual obstruction off the ground, even forty-two inches. I think you could have complete clearance because any small kid can hide under forty-two inches and not be seen. And, so I think having the 42 inches negates the safety aspect. So having no obstruction there would be. Again, I, I'm not a safety expert. I would say they follow the public work standards and like everybody else has to. I, I'm not comfortable 
um, defining what safety is for the backing out. Okay, his motion stands. Is there a, anything else? No. Okay. Is anybody ready to second that, please? I'll second that. I wanted to just, if everybody could indulge me, all those people that can vote for this, please raise your hand. One, two, three, so forth. So it's going to pass. I think I'd like not to. I understand the difficulty of this, but anyway. Okay, so is there any further comment, please? All those in favor, please speak up and say yes. Aye. So that is Dave, Bill, and Robert. All those opposed? Nay. Rob and John. Okay. So you guys have got our preliminary approval. It does not have to be unanimous. And um, good luck with this. Um, is there any further comments that anybody needs to make on today's meeting, or shall we adjourn? Okay, is there a motion for adjournment, please? Thank you. Second, anybody? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Voted for that. Okay.